Hit this the magic conference button. will now be recorded. All right. So hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Ann McMillan, the chair of the College Outreach COI, and welcome to our monthly call that we have for the COI. I believe Eddie sent out the agenda, and there's a copy on the screen in front of you. Um, I think we'll just start going through and get to the fun things. And oh, there, I can realize I can't move the screen because it's not my screen. <laughs> um, do you have any updates, Eddie, for COVID-19 as far as events and stuff like that? Uh, nothing new to report from what we were discussing. Yeah, just the, the schedule we're uh, continuing through June with all virtual events. All right, great. Um, all right, so for leadership updates, we had our last um, leadership team call last week, um, and we worked on a couple of the work plan goals that we've been moving forward with um, in regards to the virtual student chapter, think, working on possibly switching platforms from Slack to something else, um, and also moving forward with the student competition and planning for Jetsy. Uh, so those are our main topics of conversation the other day, um, and we'll be going into those in a little bit more detail further on in the agenda. So we'll just keep going forward. Um, so for number four, our leadership team, um, just always putting the call out there that if anybody um, is looking to get more involved in the COI, um, please let me know. Um, if you have a little time or a lot, we're always happy to have more volunteers for all this, the stuff that we're trying to do. Um, so if you're interested, just send me an email or give me a call and we can chat about where you might fit in. Um, and all of our contact information for the leadership team is on the COI webpage, just in case anyone is looking for it or needs it for any reason. Um, all right, so our virtual student chapter. So the last webinar was on January 18th, and the next one is tomorrow. Um, and that's, uh, or sorry, next two. So 18 February and 16 March. And those are the series of webinars related to, um, is it QIT or QIT? I keep not, not sure how to pronounce it. I've heard both going forward the other day. Same. I, uh, I've been saying QIT. Without okay. the yeah, cue it. It's Kiwit. Oh, okay. Thanks. <laughs> That's from Omaha. <laughs> um, so if you are interested in checking those out or passing those along, the information along to your student members, I believe it is on the website. Um, and the first one I think was really good, and hopefully, we'll the next two will just continue on that trend. Um, yeah. I'm I'm going to send a, I was waiting for this call, but I'm going to send a reminder out to all the student members today. Excellent. Um, and then a separate reminder to just the uh, undergrad members about the competition so that both of those Excellent. will go out. Today. Also, we are still recruiting for a, a new partner. If anybody knows of a, a firm that does any of this kind of outreach, we'd love to tee up a, someone to follow QIT starting in April. Great. And I guess I should give this over to Andra for um, the rest of the virtual student chapter. I didn't mean to take over your agenda. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> yeah, actually, um, I was just, Eddie, um, wondering with the, uh, Nick Desport had sent out that note about the, the George Mason chapter doing their, that event that they've got coming up. And he mentioned that you guys would be recording it. Would that be something that we could just reshow as a possible future webinar? Uh, the the session that they're doing at the Northern Virginia chapter. Yes. Uh huh. Um, Since it's uh you know it's it's a it's it's in line with what I think a lot of the students on the from the survey results are asking for. Uh yeah, certainly, and I'm doing the intro for it. Uh, I'm their kind of lead in speaker. So um, yeah, let's see what what how the meeting ends up going. Uh, I think the hard part is, you know, not being there, you know, we maybe we'll we'll pick the pieces we want to show versus just broadcasting the entire meeting. Uh, but um, but yeah, I mean, I think that all that those kinds of things can always be repurposed, you know, with some of our own context. Sure. Yeah, I just thought it might be might be a good good one to have. I know it's like 
scheduled for two hours and we of course wouldn't want to do the whole two hours so yeah if we could tailor okay. the recording Hi, guys. to just be what's what's um you know pertinent to the virtual student chapter that would be great hello i just Hi. signed in who's this uh, this is Al uh, Rajput. Sorry, I'm a little bit late. My computer doesn't want to get up, so finally I have to use the phone. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Uh, yeah, We're going okay. To... Yeah. Sorry. Okay, that's good. Thank you very much. I will be on phone. Thank you. No problem. Okay, so um, yeah, so that that would be a possible um, future webinar. I think we could do, and then. Um, We'll have uh, Tony Davitt speak in April uh, as well. So I, I think we can, we'll probably be set for the next uh, four months or so if we can use that recorded one from George Mason chapter. But we're always looking for webinar topics and ideas and some thought as we go into the summer, uh, you know, whether we want to continue to have a monthly or not. Um, but we do need to look, I think, for next fall at doing some sort of a career fair or internships this discussion and you'll see that as we go through the student survey slides. So I, I think that's next on the agenda if we just want to start looking at those. Sure. I think that right. sounds good. Pull it up here. Okay. Can I give you some input also from my side? Uh, who am I and what I did in the past quickly or not? Um, that's fine if you'd like to, yeah. Yeah, I have about 30, 40 years of experience of judging the projects. And that uh, is uh, my county, my state, and international world science fairs. And uh, I'm a retired uh, teacher. Teacher means school, college, universities, you know, up to that level. And I trained a lot of people how to set the projects. Also, I was uh, the judge for the SME uh, Society for Manufacturing Engineering. And uh, that's the national uh, projects judging. And what else I can add about it? And I have uh, linked with uh, most of the students of the country through the uh, uh, called Society for Science and my own universities where I taught and all those, if that could be helpful. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> Thank you. This is Ann. Great. Thank you. We're going to be talking about the competition, I think, a little bit further in the agenda. So I think that will definitely be some useful information for our vice chair of competitions, okay. Patrick. Okay. Yeah, Thank and you. sir. Uh, also, uh, if you haven't joined the K-12 STEM outreach, COI, uh, it, it, it's in some of your experience is uh, at the high school and lower levels, that might be a yes. good group for you to join as well, because they do uh, outreach more, um, you know, pre-college. Okay. All right. I appreciate that. Good. I will sure. do that. Uh, yeah, but welcome. And uh, yeah, feel free to chime in on any of the agenda items that... Uh, you want to comment on all right is this eddie or somebody else yes because i didn't get the names of the people yet <laughs> uh yes this okay. is eddie gonzalez at, uh, with us amy okay eddie okay eddie thank you very much certainly certainly um okay hey. andrew yes i have the the first slide up um, okay so just so, right. know how so um for you. yeah i'll let you know to to you can put the i guess the demographic slide up next um yeah so i'm sure everybody's familiar with the fact that we we ran a, a student member survey here recently um we were able to get uh, 51 respondents to to the survey and you can see some of the the various demographics um so 64 percent male 36 percent female mostly undergraduate students at the college level and about 25% said that they had received a SAMI scholarship, uh, and that's why they were uh, interested and still in, in, uh, involved with SAMI. Um, most of the other, actually, um, there was a lot that had parents or teachers, mentors that had turned them on to SAMI. 
was another uh, significant part of the group. Some some campers as well, and then just a a handful of students that had just uh, actually done research and found Sami through through that ap- efforts there and their interest in in particularly military engineering. So so very interesting. Uh, the universities, colleges from everywhere, and uh, also a variety of majors, but most of them were were engineering majors of some sort. So and then there was maybe a handful, uh, 20% around were uh, science type majors. And, the communication uh, slide. Oops, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, are these uh, university colleges uh, uh, projects uh, are handled by a certain group or because I did that for uh, SME, Society of Manufacturing, engineering at annual uh, award awards that we used to pick uh, throughout the nation from many universities, colleges had joined and we did that. So that was done by through the SME. Is there our group, we are doing it directly or, the, or we have to go through certain other group for doing that? Um, we're talking, we did a survey, so we're talking about the results of the survey that we did um, with oh, our student okay. members. Yes, yeah. we're going to move on okay. to the competition in a little bit. Okay, sorry. And then we can sorry go for... through some of that. Oh, no worries. Just want to clarify. <laughs> <Interrupting>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no I mean, just, just for your background, so I'm, I'm Andra Klaps, and I'm the chairman of the virtual student chapter. Oh, and I what see. we were yeah. looking for here yeah. was um, to see we're trying to just get some information from our current student members and they can be, as it turned out, you know, a, a, from a, some are actually on a SAMI student chapter at a university. Um, some were, some are not, some are in the virtual student chapter. So it's really a range. So, um, and this I is just like the survey that. results yeah. we're going okay. through. Yeah, yes. I would like that kind of things. <laughs> Well, sir, if you yeah. if you would like just to, to orient you more to what we're doing, what uh, you email me afterwards, and we can set up a, a one-on-one call so I can walk you through all the different things. Okay. That uh, since I'm the liaison to both this one and the STEM yeah. outreach, I, you know, I can like walk you through the yeah. activities that each one is doing. We can I'm one of the founding member of the STEM back in early '90s. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> Uh, and Eddie, I'm sure we can find a spot for him on one of the COIs. <laughs> We're always looking for volunteers. I know <laughs> Ann said so. I don't know. Yes, that's I'm why I'm you can be on many. His interest, yeah, for sure. Yes, so you can see how there's plenty to to contribute. Okay, to. thank you. All right. Thank uh, you. Uh, but before we go on to the next slide, Andrew, on this one, so first, 51 respondents, just so you know, is the largest uh, response we've had for any of since the two years I've been here, any student related. Thing that we put out there, so I thought that was wonderful. Pretty cool. um, and the 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 split between high school undergraduate and graduate is interesting because uh, our student member category does not extend to graduate level. We do consider that a professional category, uh, but we don't really have the infrastructure to know who those four percent are. I mean, I can go through the survey and find them, but um, yeah, that's something that uh, just as an aside, I'll have to work out. Uh, but with the 25% high school and 71% undergraduate, we have been talking about one of our longer term objectives would be to have focused outreach for high school separate from uh, post high school. And really that undergraduate should encompass two year degrees, trade schools, anybody that's out of high school really, uh, but a student in some form. So we would need to uh, differentiate that even as well. So a lot of this is really our first attempt at quantifying some of this, but hopefully it'll lead to more questions that we as a COI are gonna wanna answer about our student membership. Uh, The other piece that I wanted to highlight is uh, on the K-12 STEM outreach COI, we have also been discussing their responsibilities in managing our student membership. So at some point I see us having a kind of a a student member focused working group that includes um, K-12 STEM outreach COI members, uh, you know, to really manage the the lifespan of a student member uh, between our two COIs. Yeah, that's a good point actually, and and would make sense. 
right. I'm okay, on to so the uh, on the communication page here, uh, communication slide. Uh, so this was actually a surprise to me because we we've you know just as we've we've all talked many times about the the difficulty in communication and what's the best tool and and it is email which you know we we all thought that everybody gets too much email and that's probably not the most effective tool um but here it's pretty clear to see that uh, that email is even above text so uh so you know i don't i don't think we ever talked about not continuing to use email so that will be something and then discord just has a small percentage there but we'll talk a little bit more about that later but I still think that that's going to be an effective tool for us as well for the networking piece of it. It's maybe more so than just the pure sending out of information piece. And majority of um, of the respondents are interested in the webinars being held between uh, you know four and eight p.m. Um, I'm assuming they're all over the place. So you know I, I would guess if you we'd have to just pick Eastern time zone or whatever. For that, but if we can do them a little bit later later in the day, it's more effective timing for the students. Well, and one thing we haven't tested out, Andra, which you had referenced earlier about the the Northern Virginia Post one, is rebroadcasting the webinars as well. You know, the ones that we've coordinated, so that we would have like an initial showing at say, you know, 5 p.m. Eastern time, and then rebroadcasting it at 8 p.m. Eastern time to but one of you know some with one of us being on hand to facilitate Q and A or you know I mean we'd have to figure it out but uh, there's always an option for us to rebroadcast or even um, ask a presenter to present it twice you know depending on the presenter. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that's that's something we talk about with the international COI as well because you know there's there's definitely difficulties finding the right time of the day to have one of their webinars that reaches across the globe. Um, so yes, I think if you can record it and we can just replay it with one moderator to answer questions maybe, as opposed to maybe having to ask somebody to speak twice would be, especially if it's something like the, the ones that we have ongoing now that are more educational. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, they're available for, to be watched, but you have to you know, actively go out and seek them and pull them down as opposed to just, you know, just having a second showing of it. I think, yeah, I think, uh, sorry, yeah, I think we should first to try our national and see if we become really uh, good in doing those things, then we can add the international, you know. Yeah, no, the international is a separate committee separate community yeah. of interest that I just mentioned um, that I'm also yeah. on and that has similar similar issues, but their their topics are nothing related to what is usually not related oh, to what I students see. would be interested in. Okay. It's well, more business uh, development and things like that. So um, yeah, totally different. Just the only thing is just the difficulty of finding it a good time to actually host the webinars. Have we done any online judging yet? Last year, this year, that's the only two years that we are going through that. Uh, we partner with another, we, we don't run, we only run one competition and it's the one that we are gonna talk about in a second, but we partner with a, a oh, number okay. of other organizations okay. that do judging. So our main role has been to provide judges to other organizations. Yeah. Uh, but well, but SAE does not run its own uh, you know, judged sure. competition. Well, okay. Except yeah. for the one that we just started. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, if you go to the webinar topics page, um, this just gives a real quick list. I, I tried to summarize as much as possible um, what, you know, they were, the topics were really all over the place. There was a pretty wide range, but absolutely, there, um, the students are looking for more information on internships and career fairs in particular, um, some on the scholarship piece, uh, that was a little bit less, but um, so I think if we can have a couple webinars that focus on that sort of thing, and, and we have to again watch the timing of them, so it's so it, the timing works to help the students. We should look to do some of those, and then they're also interested in learning about different career paths that you can take. So um, you know, so we can 
maybe we'll have to think a little bit more about how we would want to organize those kind of webinars, but um, we can either pick a career field and maybe a couple of speakers from different companies to talk about how they approach or, you know, look to um, just, you know, as a mechanical engineer, there's so many ways you can, so many different things you can do, you know, highlighting those kind of things. Something like that would be another good good webinar yeah, topic. Um, yeah, and then the skills needed, which is what our current webinars, I think, talk to. And, uh, and, and then more, more information on transition from college to work. So that, I think, is that last bullet there I've gotten on the networking piece. There's definitely uh, interest there in, in that networking. And I think you can, if you can get a good networking tool set up, then a lot of those, the transition from college to work type questions could get answered there in that networking tool. So any, uh, any questions or input on, on that? Well, it's not part of the agenda, but Tiffany, um, I, I thought we'd just give a quick uh, update on where what we're doing at with JATC and, and bringing in student members, because I think some of this, it, it's not a webinar, but we are planning an orientation at JATC for student members that at least gets to um, how to use an event like JETC to advance some of these, you know, the careers, the skills, uh, you know, going to some of these sessions, hearing the speakers. I think that adds to uh, this kind of, of request for this kind of information is the more we can bring them in to the activities that we do at the national level <clears throat> as members, the more they know then how to, you know, find these, uh, find out about these topics just through our, our normal events. And specifically, if you don't know, like if you're new to this, um, our national conferences or all of our conferences, the students are free um, to attend. And we are um, planning a few specific events. Um, like Eddie said, we're going to have an orientation the Friday before the week of JETSI. And then we're also going to have a specific event for students and young members. And we're working on the logistics of it, but I think we're, um, we're, we're asking for volunteers from the young members that can be, um, let's say, mentors or guides to the JETC. So especially since it's virtual, it's a lot harder to kind of like know where to go or what to do or how like what might interest you. So what we had talked about was coming up with um, um, like short bios of the different mentors um, or guides for the JETC where it's like, let's say me, I'm an architect, I'm female, I'm 20. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I wish I was 20. No, I'm 36. I've been with SAME for 10 years um, or over 10 years. And, you know, like these are the topics that interest me, you know, or this is what I'm interested in or, you know, so I can sort of point people like if there's somebody who's interested in architecture, they would um, be more drawn to reach out to me because what we're trying to do is we're trying to make them reach out to you and then plus you know maybe we could go through and kind of like assign them off to people too so that we can um give them a little bit more guidance on how to uh how to how to figure out what classes are interesting to them and which ones they should attend because it can be overwhelming so we're trying to break it down in scale so that it's not overwhelming and that they at least have somebody at least one person if not three or four that they can reach out to in order to help them navigate the JETC. Eddie I have a question. Uh, Eddie? Yes sir. Uh, do we have access of all the posts that are doing their uh, uh, COI link with the schools of their counties or whatever chapters they're involved. Do we have that yet? or Because they have just the science fair type of uh, involvement and they give the awards uh, to the science fair winners, which is a county base or a state base, but not international base yet? Um, so I'm not sure I understand the question. So uh, through, okay. the, through the K-12 STEM outreach COI, we do 
uh, a lot of the participants in, in that community of interest are the post level um, STEM points of contact. Uh, so I we try to engage them through those calls, but there's no formal database of posts that are involved in you know science fairs or anything like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, that's what I noticed from my own chapter, you know, our own post. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, that would definitely be something to bring up during the K-12 STEM outreach call, uh, okay. and you know, you potentially volunteer to you know help pull those that kind of data together. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Sure. And this is and just one more thing to add to um, Tiffany's summary. I think during our last leadership call, we'd also talked about putting together um, a flyer about how to use the exhibit hall as a networking tool. So I think that's something that would tie into the virtual student chapter as well. Um, so how to use that exhibit hall and talk to companies and um, how to do that in a virtual manner. So I know it's completely different than walking through an actual exhibit hall where you can see people and talk to them and um do those sorts of things so that was something else that we were also working on i believe tiffany and christina good yeah we did go as far as uh, i asked the events team you know one of the things we were wondering about is having a career fair embedded in one of our national conferences versus just having a standalone career fair what i'm hoping is jtc is where we start uh not just bringing student members in but highlighting our student membership to companies so that they're aware that we're trying to, you know, uh, customer service, provide, you know, uh, good customer service to them, leading up to an eventual career fair that we might plan, uh, which then we could utilize the entire conference system of the way the exhibit hall is, but really just focused on a career fair, maybe in the fall as something uh, as part of our next year's work plan. Thanks, Eddie. Uh, oh, yeah, I, yeah. I think uh, most of the posts are, uh, I should take a little bit of time and appoint some person, coordinator with the area schools, and we should try to start uh, attending the science fairs or other activities related to STEM, that how how they operate and what they're doing. And then uh, from there, we link with those who have the access to the students of that area. And if each post does that, then we can catch most of the international you know, level. Yeah, I just, just speaking from my experience here in San Antonio, I think that that's already something our post does, and I would imagine all the all the posts do that. And I'm, I'm not an active member on the K through 12 um, STEM DOI, Eddie, but I would assume that that's something that 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 community brings together. Yeah, I think the community engagement side that is uh, activities that are done at the K 12 level. Um, you know, so and then that's all housed within the K 12 STEM COI, but. On uh, our side, uh, you know, just to remind everybody, when we go back to in-person conferences, um, Ann and I had been working a plan with the facility management workshop in San Antonio. Uh, we had gathered all the different uh, representatives from different universities across Texas, uh, and the plan was going to be to bring in students to that conference uh, with faculty. You know, we would have a coordinated experience for them, and then COVID hit, so we weren't able to uh, implement it. Uh, but that is the plan when we go back to in-person events: is okay. that we would work with local, a local post, utilizing the local university connections uh, to actually uh, recruit a you know local group of students that wouldn't have any issues traveling. Uh, the challenge with our national events is. Uh, getting posts to then sponsor student travel uh, to conferences that are not nearby. But uh, yeah, okay. but that, is, that would be a plan at the university level. Okay, you and I need to talk those things later. You know, that's a good, yeah. No problem, sir. Thank you. Uh, okay, um, so back on the survey. So if we look at slide five, just real quick, um, where can Sammy assist after graduation? Uh, this, these are the areas that they picked. Um, so again, it's 
a big one on the internship placements and networking with employers. So um, I think we've discussed that and where we can help out with that. So, um, and then finally, the last slide talks to some miscellaneous questions that we asked. Um, so uh, again, that, that virtual mentor, 57% are interested in being matched. So if there's a way, and I think what, what you guys are doing uh, for Jetsy is a, is a great start to that, but maybe we can then continue that and provide that mentorship network uh, you know, through the whole year, not just at the conferences, might be something we can look into. Um, and I was actually surprised that um, only 60% were aware that, about the scholarships and only 40% that their student registration to events was free. So that's, you know, continued public, public, publicization, <laughs> I can't talk, um, I think will go a long way towards maybe getting some, especially in the virtual environment where the travel is not an issue. Um, you know, we could see hopefully a lot of students at JetSu this year. And definitely that 84% are interested in networking with their peers. So hopefully, um, you know, that with our Discord, that could help there. And I'll just pass it off. And maybe now's a good time to talk about Discord unless we've um, got any questions on the survey. That's too many. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Well, I did want to highlight that we really hadn't had, hadn't been communicating to our student members consistently uh, up until maybe the last six months with this with the current COI. So, you know, even even the fact that sixty percent are aware of scholarships, those are all post specific. We don't have we don't run any scholarships out of the national office. So, uh, you know, a lot of these things have been left to chance. And with the newsletter that we're now putting out, you know, I think the next newsletter should have some of these results embedded in it as as results. Um, you know, I think we're we're still turning the corner on on this type of communication, but uh, it does mean we need to be purposeful about you know having a plan for communicating these things to us and not just assume they're going to hear about it. Yep. Thanks, Sandra. And thank you for putting all the results together. Are we? That was very helpful. No problem. Would you mind putting the agenda back up, Eddie? Okay. Uh, all right, excellent. So we talked about our survey. Did anyone else have any questions about the survey results? Um, I think they were uh, sent yeah. out with the slides as well. I did want to say congratulations on getting 51 people to actually respond. <laughs> I know. Okay, did the, That's great. Did the survey, uh, did this survey has a uh, question or volunteered by the students about their grades, what grade level they are, the who, who returned the survey? It was separated by graduate, undergraduate, and high school. So that was a nice. yeah, there, was, um, there was another question that was a little bit more difficult to summarize where we asked them when they graduate and that was that was all over the place. So, you know, I think there was no predominant year group of uh, of the uh, especially but we the have a qualifying group. age or qualifying grade for the uh, high school people. There would be seniors only or could be juniors in ninth grade or or only 11, 12th grade. No, it's, we didn't it's any student on up until undergraduate is a student member. So Very sad part that I should share with you. Very sad part uh, that schools do not provide any uh, project support because they don't have science teachers. Sometimes science teacher positions are filled by math or history, geography, and all those things. So that's a decline in our uh, education system. I had been part of a lot of education as a board of governors of uh, universities, colleges, and all those. So I brought that question. I said, you guys are going to link with the schools, though you are in universities and college, but you don't know your pipeline. And uh, if I may say, what, or take one more minute. Uh, I designed a uh, 
Vision 2020 in Orange County, California, back in the 80s when I was with the aerospace uh, people. And uh, we gave the idea what the subjects need to be taught, which was part of the STEM when I was designing that, that we need a basic STEM type of thing to be taught at the schools. And thanks God, it it started after 20 years, and it's running for the last 20 or 15 years. So that's good news. But there is a uh, communication problem. If we have that, one of the items that how to communicate with all the county superintendents, at least to start from top and then go down to their county superintendents. Yeah, anyhow, okay. There is a plan. Well, one of our longer term strategies would be uh, to get our student chapters involved in local K-12 STEM outreach. Good. So there is okay. another connection there. But again, you know, a lot of this is just based on if we haven't been working in that area, we need to find a way to get into that area. Uh, and for okay. some of our chapters, it's they just need to know how to make those kinds of connections. Um, and volunteers to head those programs. Uh, yeah. I would be so, happy to help you in that area if you can. Uh, yeah. Well, sir, are you, are you in Orange County? Yes, I am in Orange County, California. Okay. When you email me, I'll introduce you to Vivian Gu. Do you know Vivian Gu? I have um, never personally met and chatted, but the names are heard because of the being part of the post. Yeah. Okay. Uh, she's very active and she's uh, the K 12 STEM outreach POC that joins us on our calls on, on the other call on the other community of interest call. So I'll introduce you when you email me um, I and see. you can catch up on what they're doing locally. Okay. I didn't attend the post meeting for the last uh, maybe year and a half now. <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah. Well, they're doing a lot. So yeah, I definitely need to connect you all. So it seems okay. like you have good ideas. Well, so, sounds good, Eddie. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, okay. So we talked about our student survey results, um, our competition. Um, so Patrick and Eddie, would you like to provide an update on where we are with the competition? Uh, yeah, Patrick, I could give an update since we haven't chatted. Uh, right now, we only have one entry. So uh, that's part of the update that I'm sending out later today uh, is you know, just to try to make sure we get some more entrance. Um, you know, I'm hoping like everybody else, I do know there's a number of schools that are working on projects. So uh, our deadline is the, what did we put the 20? 26th of February. 26th, yeah, so next Friday. Uh, obviously we'll take them through the weekend. I'm not, it's not like, I'm not gonna be taking emails, but um, yeah, that's kind of where we're at. Uh, I'll send a note out to, the couple of the COIs, uh, the K-12 COI as well, just to make sure you know any connections they have can get worked through, uh, encouraging teams to submit. But if you don't, yeah, if you need details about the competition and want to help us promote it, um, just go to the competition's webpage that you can get to from the College Outreach COI page. I know we've been putting it in our email blast every every week or so. Yeah. And Kevin, uh, I'm sorry, Eddie, uh, I know that my um, student group is looking at it and is planning on submitting. Um, I just feel like, <laughs> I mean, it's like uh, registration deadlines, you know, like they just wait till the last day and they're like, we don't have to turn it in until the last day, you know, kind of thing. So I feel like <laughs> we are going to get a lot more. They're just trying to figure out the logistics of who's doing what. And I think they're looking at whether or not they're going to put in one team or two, although I haven't looked at what the parameters are of it oh, sorry i haven't got to that yet but i do know that my my student group wants to put in at least one so okay well i just put the url to the competitions page on the chat if you want to pull it and i i brought up the page real quick so you can you know all the information is there for you to uh, help promote it um instructions the submission form so any questions come up feel free to phone to me 
Right, and if you want to help out with the uh, the judging part as well, you can let me know. I'll put my uh, my email in the uh, in the chat so you have that too. I think he's on the phone, so we might have to um, send that through an email later. Oh sure. <laughs> Not a I have a requirement or a request for if any of you or some friends want to be a judge for the International Science Fair, that would be 11th, 12th grade of the international, that would be virtual judging. So I will send. That actually sounds like something you should send to Eddie, and Eddie could probably put out on the e blast <laughs> to see if we can get okay, it. Okay, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, because he, yeah, because Austin County might be maybe a part of that also because a lot of people uh, judges are from Texas area, Texas, Phoenix, East Coast, you know, Boston, all those things. That's what I thought. Maybe they are well aware of it and how we can mix with them and then use their ideas, their resources also for future plan. That was the idea. Okay. Thank you. Um, did you guys have any other updates for the competition? I'm good. I think next end. next month we'll have a better idea of how many entries we'll have, and then we can plan. We're going to plan our judging accordingly. I think right. the, the the game plan correct. Super easy. Excellent. All right. So I think next on our agenda was scholarships, and I think we're on hold with that scholarship advisory group until the guidance is updated. Yes, and I do have it back. I've, I've pulled it from the bottom of my stack to try to get regrouped. Uh, we just finished a big mentoring advisory group deliverable that we'll be presenting on on Thursday at the Leader Development Community of Interest call. So that uh, um, I needed to get that off my plate first. So I'm moving to scholarships next. I did put the link to the scholarships page on the chat because that is one of the things that we were able to do is create a separate page for scholarships. I, I think the the hard part for us at the national level is that, like I mentioned earlier, we don't run any scholarships directly. So our role really is to support the posts in their ability to run scholarships. And one of the things that we're trying to offer is a scholarship portal uh, so that we can capture all the applicants as student members in our database and grow our student membership. Right now, Alaska, uh, the Alaska Anchorage Post and the San Diego Post are the only ones using the portal, uh, but I've had inquiries from uh, San Antonio, Dallas, and I'll have to look one other one. Uh, uh, they're already in their cycles now, but they're thinking about this for, for next year's cycle. So. But uh, as soon as I get that guidance together, I'll get the advisory group uh, back together. Okay. Um, there we go. Um, do we have any updates from any of the liaisons for other COIs or updates that are from other COIs that folks might think are relevant? I can report on the camp COI um, because we are going to be uh, recruiting mentors. So, um, you know, and, and all the folks that are in this interest of college outreach would be ideal um, camp mentors. But we are moving ahead with uh, our summer camps. Right now, Navy is the only camp that has already uh, made the decision to go virtual. So we're working with the Naval Academy to uh, design a virtual camp right now for the Navy camp participants. Uh, but the other four camps, Army, Air Force, Air Force Academy, and um, Marine Corps are all moving ahead with uh, recruiting of campers. So that application is open, as is the application for being a mentor at these camps. So if you have any interest in spending part of your summer at a camp, um, go to the camp's COI page. Or the, the camp we should state. send that to Christina as well, so she can put that in the newsletter. Um, so folks might be interested in that. Uh, I will put the URL in the website with a reference there. Excellent. Any other updates or other COI news? 
On Thursday, we're going to be presenting the leader development COI is going to be presenting a mentor guide uh, and it's a brief that the mentor advisory group, which is part of the leader development COI created. Uh, we are defining mentoring as a leader development skill, both for the mentor and the mentee. So that's why it's housed within the leader development COI. But uh, the guide is going to talk about um, the mentoring that we do at our camps. Uh, and also the mentoring that POST can do with uh, their scholarship recipients, for an example. Our next deliverable uh, out of the advisory group is going to be to develop a toolkit for POSTs to develop a one-on-one -on -one mentoring program. And that could be student-focused, it could be young professional-focused, uh, but especially for the POSTs that have student chapters, um, we hope that a lot of them would be interested in adding an, an element of mentoring to the students that are involved in their student chapter as a target. So more to come there. Join us on Thursday if you are interested. Okay, one uh, point that I can mention uh, about the mentoring. What I did, uh, I don't want to mention how long ago, <laughs> again, uh, that I was able to connect with the local industries of the states and those and asked for uh, ask for a one person who can uh, donate a one day and go to the schools or the universities and give a lecture about the, uh, not a lecture, and talk about uh, what is good about th those subjects that they are working on from in that industry. And the response was very big and uh, we had a very big uh, donation from NSF in millions and that program is still going on in my county and I was part of that writing those things at that time. So maybe we would uh, try to connect that way and see if I can help again. Okay. Yeah, I can look into that. Uh, if you send that information to Eddie, we can get that to the right place. Okay. Um, and one thing that's just not on the agenda, but I think we did want to discuss while we have a few more minutes left. Um, we had mentioned earlier that we were looking to replace the current Slack um, platform with another program. Um, so an update from our leadership team is the leadership team is a uh, we'll call it beta testing, um, using Discord as a platform um, to communicate with our student members um, and as a tool for our, uh, the student members to communicate with each other. So that peer networking that we were discussing earlier from the survey. Um, so we're attempting to see how that will go so far. Um, we had um, Charlie Lee, who was helping to um, get us all familiar with the platform and the tools that it has available. Um, so we'll provide some more information on that as we go. Um, but I know we were just starting to get the basics together um, as far as seeing what um, the platform has to offer and if it might work a little better than Slack for our student members as a communication tool. Um, I'm wondering whether Jetsy would be a good uh, test for us as well with the students. If we had a, a thread related to Jetsy, that would give us an opportunity to send an invite out. We'd have until April to get ourselves organized. Uh, but, um, and Chris will have to help us continue to orient us, but to have a running Discord channel for JTC for the students to be commenting, you know, as they go to sessions and connecting the young professional mentors might be a good experiment. Yeah, I think, I think that's a reasonable timeline that we can work with. Um, <laughs> They'll probably be a lot faster to get to get on board with it than uh, some of us were to get online with it. <laughs> um, but I think that's definitely something we can yeah work on and um, also see how that fits in with our plans with the young members as well. Um, see if they have, if they have any suggestions with that, um, or how we can fit that into the plans we already have. Excellent. And then um, the last thing that we always like to leave a couple minutes for is just requests for future COI topics. And if there's anything um, as COI members that you need help with. So is there any, if there's any um, questions, concerns, ideas for future meetings, now's the chance to have the floor.
All right. Well, thank you everybody for your time today. And uh, we will talk again next month. And in the meantime, if you have anything, um, questions, concerns, comments, feel free to send them my way. Happy to chat about them. Uh, and uh, would we be send Would we be sending the contact list email for each of us that we are talking, or or the Edis group that we can uh, communicate to each other later? Sure. Um, if okay. you reply to the the calendar invite, that has Addy's contact information on it, and he can forward um, your questions and information to um, the rest of the team if it's if you can't well, see it in the um, invite. Um, okay. But our contact information is also on the COI okay. webpage for I will look at uh, it. on SAME. Okay. okay, I will look at it. Thank you. No problem. All right, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. I Thank hope you everybody has much. power soon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Uh, All right. Bye, everybody. Thanks. Bye. 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 Thank you very much. Eddie, you gonna call later or or just after this meeting? I don't know. Uh, no, sir. I was asking for you to send me an email. So oh, I see. Okay. The range okay. of time. Okay. okay. I will do that. All right. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Eddie. You have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye. Bye.